welcome back to the next weekly daily Wednesdays where we can sit back, relax, Hello. take a midweek break and share with you some of the things that we found interesting going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone. That is Jill Bryant. And over there is Pedro Mateus. Hello. Hey, everyone <laughs> watching us live on a Wednesday. What's going on? What's new? I've been sitting around. I thought, don't you love it when you're waiting in like a package or a couple of packages and like the one that needs to show up and like, oh, that's showing up today. Then it gets to then three o'clock. Then you're like, oh, it's going to be a late delivery. And so by 7.30 <laughs> p.m., you're not out of hope. But yeah, Gal, there's still 30 minutes. Gal yeah. has arrived. And then you go to check and it goes from delivered today to pending. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then you get the RNG <laughs> stuff. And this was a very simple little power thing I needed to do another thing. Because in the studio, if I'm going to do a video on something and it's like, oh, I have to remove that. I only want to do that once. So... It's like, okay, well, I got to add this. So I'm going to have that out. Then I can do them. So it's kind of like holding up a bunch of things and it's still pending. But, you know, <laughs> considering with everything going on in the world right now, small complaint, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> very <laughs> tiny problem. <laughs> Pedro, your package did show up. Yes. It did. Um, I have one of the big, chunky. Uh... Mm hmm. Mbox 2s from DigiDesign, and um, like Ven mentioned uh, before we started doing the show proper, um, mm -hmm. it's a thing that you plug in via USB mm -hmm. uh, into Linux, and it doesn't work out of the box. That, um, that left me uh, completely stupefied, so I plugged it into my work laptop, which runs Windows 10, and after uh. the driver's installed, it's like, oh, the LEDs have come on. Ooh, this is going to be an interesting one. <laughs> we were talking in the pre-show, and I was like, well, what about the kernel driver? <laughs> to which I said, what kernel driver? <laughs> you know, they also kernel driver that makes it cut on? That one? <laughs> yeah, apparently, I in all my Googling to figure out why it didn't come on, no one mentioned the driver. <laughs> <laughs> it is one of those things, though, with the uh, inbox. Uh, Sam Audio, he did the, re he just straight up mm. reverse engineered it because um, DigiDesign later added and it's like, we're not giving you any specs. And it's like, fine, I'll do it myself. And, um, but I, I look forward to um, hearing more about your boxy adventures. <laughs> yes, uh, that after we're done with the show, that's uh, that's the rest of my evening. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> we have that covered. What's new with you, Joe? Oh, well, I got the Mbox Mini 2, the little Smurf box. And um, it actually, uh, it, when I plugged it into Linux Ubuntu Mate 1910, it, it, uh, the lights came on, but I haven't played yeah, it. Yeah, rub it in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Aww. And also, I had a lot of fun watching Pedro on the Linux Tech Podcast on Monday. That was a lot of fun, a Portuguese Linux Tech Podcast. It was awesome. Watching being the keyword <laughs> there because, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was very much in Portuguese. <laughs> yes, definitely. But it was, it was wonderful. And I also enjoyed being on Jupiter Broadcasting's Linux Unplugged yesterday. Yes, Linux uh, Jupiter Broadcasting is still going strong. So um, despite some, some uh, a few uh, unfortunate events that happened, uh, someone getting laid off. But anyways, so, but they're still going strong. No problems there. And um, so had fun there. And then I was on Big Daddy Linux Live European, European edition on Saturday <laughs> <European>? again. <laughs> European? European. <laughs> 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 so it's been a busy week in Linux. <laughs> Let's get started this week by taking a look at a new piece of kit from System76, mm -hmm. the Lima yeah. Pro. Work untethered. Mm -hmm. you know, they've come a long way from rebadged yes. laptops. I got to give them credit for that. And you that can... looks like that looks like one of the new um, ThinkPads. <laughs> but it's not Pedro. 
But it's not. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> not. <laughs> you can scroll out a little bit. Uh, let's see. What do we have here? 14 hours of battery life, 10th gen Intel Core i5, i7, 40 gig, up to 40 gigs of uh, dual channel DDR4. Open firmware, core boot. Good to see. That's very nice. Up to four <laughs> terabytes of NVMe. That's awesome. And I put this together. What did you end up with? Um, did you take the Pepsi challenge? It's like, well... I went to the CPU options. It's like, oh, it's only Intel. How about them Ryzen's? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> so, Aw. But it is beautiful. It's sleek. And it's only 2.2 pounds. So, you know, it packs a punch for that size and weight and class. And it's, you know, fairly decent priced as well. And what's also cool is that you can connect two monitors to it via HDMI or USB-C. Yeah, beautiful. This is this is the System76 laptop I've been wanting because it's so portable and sleek and thin and, and beautiful and powerful. <laughs> I was able to stick one together. It came into about twelve hundred bucks, and you know that's with mm-hmm. i5, sixteen gigs of RAM, uh, two hundred fifty gig NVMe. That's not a bad you're, price. The, yeah, yeah. You're just paying for the form factor, and in that form factor, that's really not that high. Yeah, that's at all. Great price. <laughs> yeah, I'm mm-hmm. down with that. Um, it's yeah. always good to see how they're making better stuff, and you know prices are coming down. Which yep. That's really good to see. I don't know. Yes, do you think yes. they'll release a version with some uh, wood grain? <laughs> I hope so. Oh, don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just give you like a little skin for your touchpad. It's just wood grain. <laughs> I'd like maple, please. That'd be nice. Man. That'd be pretty wild. Uh, we do have some good news from Gnome, though. They have a little bit of a challenge. Yeah. So, and, and. I've got the gnome shirt on right now. So I've been looking forward to talking about this wonderful event. So the Gnome Foundation, in partnership with Endless of Endless OS, is proud to announce the inaugural Community Edition Challenge, an exciting new opportunity to engage beginning coders with the free and open source software community. And Gnome are looking for individuals or teams to sum- submit creative and fun and engaging ideas to encourage new coders and developers to contribute to the FOSS community and stay engaged. And it's really awesome. It's part of a three-day, a three-part challenge offering $65,000 in cash prizes and other rewards to the winners mm-hmm. of each phase. And the first one, um, they're taking submissions now, which is a written proposal with entry entry description and team background. Phase two is the proof of concept. And phase three is the sample project. And yeah, phase one is now open for submissions till July 1st, 2020. And uh, can be submitted online from the link in our show notes. So this is just very wonderful. And... I got to talk to Melissa Wu, the program coordinator at the Known Foundation at Scale 18X, and she had told me about the challenge and has been in contact with me and sent me some information on it. So I was really happy to be able to talk about it now because it's it's uh, just been released. So this is okay. wonderful. <laughs> Yay! Pretty cool. Uh, up next, we have a little bit of news. There's mm-hmm. a new distribution. That a lot of people like to use. And yeah. it's AV Linux. It's pretty cool. We got a new release. It is 2020.410 is oh, released. Oh, cool retro term. Dude, <laughs> come on. You know, the <laughs> best thing to run on your dedicated audio box is something that's CPU yeah. intensive for no reason. So it looks pretty, right? GLX enabled terminal. Dude, Aww. I'm just saying, man. Uh, <laughs> Well, artists like that. <laughs> this got a, um, that's why artists shouldn't have computers. Um, yeah. <laughs> AV Linux software demos. You get the uh, Cinderella GG video editor. Gang is stuff. This basically is going to roll out with your basic that you need for audio and video editing. You know, it's going to have all the right bits flipped mm-hmm. for, you know, dealing with RT audio, which is real time. And this latest one is based on Debian 10. And they've even packed in a kernel 5.4. And there's nice. uh, low latency in real time versions of that available. And to Pedro's yeah. Pedro's joy, they've nuked yes. KDE because it was just too big. 
Uh, to be fair, the only thing KDE-wise that they were using was uh, KDN Live. And as it turns out, the mm -hmm. uh, kitchen sink uh, was making the ISO a bit of a chonky boy. Yeah. I had to sneak <laughs> in that extra K there. <laughs> there has been an update to the noise repellent um, plugin. That's mm -hmm. something that I use. And this, this is a really good piece of kit if you're looking to make an appliance. So... Yep. Really this, awesome. This, this is where I'll stop somebody who's like, well, I'm running this. And I'm like, are you using it for a desktop? Yeah, don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Aww. Simple as that. <laughs> don't. It's not a desktop operating. This is like, oh, I have my audio box or I got a video box. Outside of that, because in, if you're just doing video editing, you don't need any of this. Just keep that in mind. Yeah. Very cool. Well, what's really awesome is they include Cinelera GG Video Editor, which works beautifully under AV Linux. In fact, uh, several years ago, I, I that's I hadn't played around with Cinelera in a while, and um, it was just running very stable on AV Linux and really fast too. And the other point I wanted to make about this distro that's just amazing is the user man manual. It's one of the best and most detailed that I had ever seen for any distro. It's really beautifully written and it goes step by step and all the detail is there on, you know, installation to running some of the programs and everywhere, everything in between. So mm. it's really amazing. I'd like to mm -hmm. point at the Arch Wiki. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but uh, one of the things that jumped out at me, it's like, oh, <laughs> NVMe support. Why wasn't that not there? But it's good that it is because, you know, it's even lower latency access to the stuff that you have stored. So that's good. <laughs> uh, it, it's a good distribute. I am always hesitant to recommend it. In the only, but only in the sense that you'll know if you need it. You know, if you know that you need a dedicated yeah. audio box. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's really where I'm at. And like, yo, if you, you're going to get into like audio production, that's a good thing. And we're not talking about recording your voice with audacity. You don't. Need yeah. It. It's, it's <laughs> massive overkill. And it might yeah, lead you into learning this. to, you know, getting some of this stuff set up for yourself. But yeah. here's a mm -hmm. blast from the past. Yay. Well, this is Window Maker 0 0.95.9 .9 has been released and it's been more than three years since we've had a stable release and it's it comes with lots of bug fixes improvements and visual cleanup and what's really cool is there are lots of updates to the windows prefs configuration window including a new advanced option to ignore decoration changes from clients in the advanced tab this is very, very important. I, I have had issues with apps like Steam crashing because there is a bug in Window Maker with apps that do not use window decorations by default. They have a tendency to crash. So that was fixed. And also system fonts are properly read in the font configuration panel now and are not visually garbled. Yay. <laughs> and there is a fix to missing app icons after restarting Window Maker. And, you know, I, I, all these changes I've, I've been experiencing in great detail because it's the main uh, X window server um, window manager that I use. And I've always loved it. I've been using it since the late 90s. And because I love living the next step and open step lifestyle. <laughs> well, next step failed for a reason, but I'm glad somebody still likes it. Um. <laughs> oh, well, I have a next station behind me. <laughs> so. I, I wouldn't admit that in public, but hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> like next step, after step, um, it's, like, it's always been more of a curiosity. It's not um, functional. Is <laughs> the word I would like to use. Uh, it's Aww. not been updated to the point of modern usability, but. <laughs> I have lots of configuration configuration files I use. Yeah, I, see, I copy I, and paste whenever I update my distros and I have all my is, little doc apps. Most people got too much work to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you just save them and then you cut and paste them in when you do a new install. That sounds like a bunch of extra steps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that doesn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, the last time I used uh, anything even remotely close to uh, Window Maker, 
Mm-hmm. In fact, I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure it was Windowmaker because that's what Haiku is using. Yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, I tried Haiku, installed it to one of the laptops. It's like, oh, look, it works. I have Wi-Fi <laughs> after I shut down and restart the Wi-Fi card three times. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't judge anybody about what like, yeah. desktop they run because I mean, window manager, desktop manager, it's just like, as long as I can open up a billion terminals and lose track of them, I'm good. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's yep. a, yeah. Get your work done. That's what yes. I look for. Uh, what do we have up next? Oh, up next, we a have birthday. Git. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yay. 15 whole years of Git. And uh, so GitHub decided to do a bit of an interview with the uh, current uh, maintainer of uh, Git, Junio Hamano, uh, who is, uh, well, uh, he took over from Linus uh, when Linus uh, basically wanted to move Peace away down. from developing <laughs> Git. Uh, and uh, Junio stepped in. And it was. Um, 2005 so uh no that was the first yeah that was the first release uh uh, 2005 was when Mm -hmm. uh git first came out and it was during uh a period when linus sort of took a break from the linux kernel and uh julio's like okay i'm gonna go help linus because i've been working on the linux kernel and now he's doing that so i'm gonna help him do that so he can get back to the linux kernel and uh you know, as years went on, uh, Linus decided, you know, you take care of it now. You are the, the maintainer, so here he is. And I, I did a control F, because the interview comes from uh, GitHub. Control F, Microsoft, nothing. So there goes the rest <laughs> of my interest. Oh. <laughs> 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 Well, as you know, most of our audience knows, but maybe for those new users listening to our show, the Git distributed version control system and collaboration changed the way developers and the world build software. And in doing this, Linus not only created Linux, but built an open source framework for maintaining it, which was beautiful. It, it has opened up the world of open source because he did this. It's... it's at the Amazing. end of the day, you got to sit back and think about it, man. It's been a valuable contribution, especially mm-hmm. if you're trying the latest and greatest. And you got to build stuff on your own. How many times have you hammered out those digits in a terminal? Mm-hmm. Git clone. Yeah. Yep. Hey, yep. Man. <laughs> Git has got stuff done. Push 100%. and pull. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, push isn't working. Push dash dash fourth. <laughs> Yeah, there yeah. Goes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's kind of brilliant. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up, uh, I've known this has been around for a long, long time, but I thought to check it because I you, sometimes when you're setting something up and you think you just get everything figured out, you're like, it's always good to just go back and check the basics. And if you're doing some audio on Linux, one thing you normally want is this handy script from Raboof. It's the real-time configuration quick scan. It's a Perl script. You put it in, it's going to check for some very basic things, like things that I thought, hey, man, I got this. I just do this out of the box. It's a reflex reaction. But, you know, this is going to tell me, this is straight up told me, it's like, you forgot to enable access to your H you know, to your hyperstation event timer, <laughs> which I did. Pedro yeah. also is like, hey, man, it's got a GUI. And I'm like, really, Pedro? It's got a GUI. Pedro's like, I'm using the GUI. Look, here's my GUI. <laughs> and- <laughs> <laughs> I had five not goods. Which, surprisingly, was uh, a lot less than I originally expected. But uh, then you said, it's like, oh, yeah, that's, of course, a solid three out of a hundred things that (laughs) could possibly cause problems. Uh, So I started fixing all the ones that I could. And Mm -hmm. the only one I couldn't fix was the last one. Mm -hmm. The um, full ticklessness of the kernel. Mm -hmm. Cannot achieve that with either the Zenmod kernel or the default uh, Ubuntu kernel. Just build your own kernel. Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> later <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and actually this worked really great for me too uh, especially since i'm using a newly installed distro that still needed some some tweaks and like vin said forgetting something obvious like i needed to set my cpu governors to performance on my ubuntu mate install i'd forgotten to do that on this uh box when i reinstalled a new distro. <laughs> Remember, kids, if you're doing um, like a dedicated production box, an appliance box, you don't have to worry about governors. You just disable C states. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you do. It's always a performance then at that speed, but you know. That's always mm-hmm. good. Uh, if you are just doing stuff like, you know, we're, you're just having a chat on Skype and stuff like that, and you, you want to squeeze a little bit, and maybe you got some pops and clicks or something like that, go check out the show notes. It's, um, you can put in your uh, Pulse.pa file um, mm-hmm. to increase your priority. And yeah, it's something you'd normally be dealing with. I, I just wrote a little quick thing like, try this first before going crazy. That will definitely help you out. And, um, you know, it's a piece of cake. People say, Audio under Linux is a mess. Ha! Nah. Far worse than that. <laughs> it's plug and play. <laughs> it really is. No, it's not. For the most part. <laughs> for the most part. Yeah. For the most part. <laughs> That's cute. It's not. But um, well, oh, it oh, works okay. better than a lot of times in the Windows. You just want to play a video game. Hey Pedro, what <laughs> happened when you video? Hang, hang on, uh, Pedro. What happened when you plug that into the Windows box the first time? This isn't oh, something yeah. you get to play video games with, come on. <laughs> or to watch videos with. We were talking about audio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. Audio but, on yeah. Linux. If you're an end user and what you're doing is playing video games, watching videos, doing the regular end user stuff, mm-hmm. Linux audio is fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <sighs> Both of you are adorable. I'm coming up next from (laughs) Fossbytes. Have you tried Windows 10 audio? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I don't think Ben has too much experience right now when Wind blows 10. (laughs) So which one of you needs the Windows AI SO subsystem explained to you in detail? Who wants to go first? (laughs) It's cute when end users talk about stuff. Uh, Go ahead. Um... But yeah, speaking of Windows, uh, the that w- that's just a terrible uh, article title. New Linux code yeah. to reduce transfer speed in FAT file system uh, from 383 to 51 seconds. Reduce transfer speed time. Nope. Yeah. No, Pedro, <laughs> this is going to make everything fast. I will be able to read and write at a gigabyte a second to my um, uh, SD card. No, no, it oh. won't. Uh, because I had a look at the code and the article itself, it's like, this is just like improving uh, legacy code for the old, old FAT yeah, uh, file system code. Yeah, mm. FAT12 and FAT16 are what's being improved here. And um, the person who submitted the patch did a bit of a test with an external hard drive plugged in uh, via USB, uh, formatted in FAT12 and FAT16. And... Mm-hmm. It went, the transfer that he made went from 383 seconds down to 51. Mm -hmm. That is almost four times faster. That's pretty good. Yeah. (laughs) That's really good. What's the last time that you really expected high performance from um, anything this would apply to? Well, it's really good for accessing EFI partitions from your computers for booting your OS. That's about 32. Mm-hmm. But that's 32, and I, I don't know why they... Uh, because it's a bad have... article. Yeah. <laughs> You're so right. It's a really bad article. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Moral well of the written. story, read the fine prints. So this, this is regular fat, yes. man. This is old school. Like, yeah, stuff that you old, normally wouldn't run Really into. legacy old school. Fat yeah. 12 and Fat 16 are the key ones here. Maybe Fat 32 is an improvement. But that's not what this was aimed at. Mm. Oh, wow. Maybe they'll get it right on the okay. updated revision. I'm like, oops. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just a bad article. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Hey, this isn't... Uh, you know how you can replace backgrounds in Skype and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. Well, this guy wanted to do it on Linux, and he figured out a way, uh, you know, piece of cake. You know, you're like, oh, I just lost half of everyone watching the video. You're like, wait a minute. I type <laughs> piece of cake. Like, code. Yeah. <laughs> code. Well, it depends. I mean, for, this is kind of a piece. It's like, oh, of course you're using Docker for this. Um, <laughs> but he is oh, taking, hi, Jordan. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, Docker all the things. Containers, baby. <laughs> taking Making use of TensorFlow. So you're going to need NVIDIA for this. And NumPy. So... This is hammering out. That's going to give you an image mask. I'm like, okay, that's neat. Oh, of course, we're going to put Star Trek in the back of it. And um, <laughs> this is Star Wars. <laughs> that's clearly Star Trek. Um, what are you talking about? That's clearly Farscape. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you yes. be a That's Dargo. <laughs> 
But taking advantage of PY fake webcam and v, uh, V4L2 loopback, man, you need to change that nice. name. I've never gotten that one the first time. He just goes straight up Jedi with this and composites it together. And that's going to allow you to use it with things like not Zoom. Don't use Zoom, kids. Quit using Zoom. Uh -huh. It's just a security sieve. Even Google's like, quit using Zoom. Um, yeah, you can make a little virtual webcam, replace your background image, and end up with, look, uh, so animated. I, yeah. Pro tip, man. Uh, uh, unsolicited. Don't feedback. move around too much. Well, that's what. <laughs> yeah. I'm, well, this, this is what I'm saying. Is like if you're going to do an animated GIF, you might want to animate a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like that's technically it's moving. There is a movie. Yeah, it's like, just I'm yeah. guessing the image mask doesn't update all that much, so he can't yeah. move around too much. Otherwise, it's just going to clip him. <laughs> well, it's still something fun to play with. You're stuck at home. You're not doing anything anyway. So yeah. And I think it's great that I he used I AI was. to do it. That's that's wonderful. <laughs> it's like, well, I can take advantage of <laughs> TensorFlow. Oh, look, somebody's container rice. Of course they have. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> since I've already been, you know, accused of being the one that likes GUIs on this episode, make a GUI out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Reinforcement learning. A a AI. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, that works. That's a good reason. That's a good excuse. Hey, if you like what we do, um, a little shameless plug, uh, you can support our nonsense each and every week at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We got a couple of free rewards. You cook your way for making the show possible. Extra hour of content, early access to the live and uncut feeds if you miss those. And you get that in a podcast format. What else do we have? Uh, show note access, uh, Discord. We can come hang out with Discord, us. But we have yes. IRC. That's completely open to everyone for our live things. And I remember mm -hmm. to update some things. If you are curious about what mm. is in the studio making all this possible, I have a Amazon list of each and everything itemized to satisfy your curiosity. We have wish zones if you're looking at like, you don't need to buy that. That's what we're planning on getting. That's our grocery list. And um, what else am I missing out? We do Tuesday. What did you do Tuesday? You did a stream with you. You're still in Dark Souls yes. though, right? I am. And I mm -hmm. uh, was uh, very, very proud of myself that I managed to get from the start of Sun's Fortress. Admittedly, I didn't explore everything about Sun's Fortress, but I got to the end and beat the boss. Got got invaded and killed twice, uh, but got all the way to the end in an hour. Mm. <laughs> That's pretty neat. Very cool. Jordan's going to be rocking something on Thursday. I upcoming uh, we do have a schedule at linuxgamecast.com i did update linuxgamecast.com to like have all the categories under the home section so if you mouse over that that'll pop up for you and uh twitch is adding we have a schedule there but twitch has added a schedule system so you can always keep track of uh when we go live or you just listen to us after mm -hmm. the fact that's definitely a thing mm -hmm. and uh i think that's it for our shilling our shape oh we have shirts yep. with our pictures on them and we stuff. We do need to yes. thank to... We got, uh, we got patrons to thank as well. Yeah, two very, very uh, mm -hmm. nice people. One of them's Portuguese. is Christoph. Uh, yeah. He's our new Patreon. Thank you very much. Okay. You could help me out with that. He's the awesome. letter three is um, pronounceable in Portuguese. I, I just ignore that. It's just Christoph. Well, <laughs> oh, no. Well, I know you always use unaccounted four. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's we also have three. I don't know. <laughs> that's pretty. That's funny. And we also have Chris who upped his pledge. We don't know which Chris. We do have a few of them. <laughs> but Chris has upped his uh, it pledge. It could be Chris B who very generously gave me this uh XLR AT2020, the Chris B oh. memorial microphone. <laughs> very true. Could be. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mysterious Chris, we thank you. We yes, take <laughs> we love you. <laughs> we get to do all the fun stuff, but we get to get into mm, nom noms. Mm. Slice of pie. Slice oh, of cinnamon pie. peach IPA. Mm. That sounds kind of disgusting. <laughs> well, you were cinnamon with it until you're like, oh, look, sweet, 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 something yeah. that's not sweet. Ew. 
cinnamon. Nope, I don't like nope, cinnamon. But it is very much uh, in the nom category because <laughs> them some ribs. And, uh, you know, the secret yes. to cooking perfection <laughs> is uh, very much in the eye or the hand of uh, the person manning the, um, the outdoor cooking facilities. But if you'd like some help or uh, if you're, again stuck at home and you're bored and you need something to do uh you can get a heat sensor with a raspberry pi and uh run it around your barbecue and figure mm -hmm. out the exact right temperature that you need to cook get an even cook of the uh in that case uh that you see in the pictures there are ribs but i see the pictures of like the finished products like uh yeah the outside looks fine uh, could have used a bit more um in the mm. way of uh liquid seasoning Yummy. like some lemon juice yeah just lemon juice um and i would i would have liked to see like the inside just uh, slice uh, through the meat to see how the inside looks then i would pass judgment now i can't <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> i don't know <laughs> man I, I mean this, using grid db uh, to, to visualize your food and pit data Yep. I just don't know about bringing C code to a cookout. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Putting the C in cookout. I... Yeah. <laughs> mm. I, I, I want to believe that there there is some artistry to um, yeah. grilling and smoking. And I, I, I'm down with this. I was like, I wonder if I can do a thing. Because you think about if you ever cook, um, Pedro, you... As a fellow person who cooks, you <laughs> every wanna, day. <laughs> yeah, right. And do you ever like if it's something timing based and you never set a timer, then you manage to get it just right now? Like, dang it. I really wish I, I didn't had. time that. I have no idea why I did that. Yeah. <laughs> <And it's perfect. laughs> it happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and what's worse is like the fourth or fifth time you've repeated this like one of these days i'm just going to get like a timer and like set it just in case i mm -hmm. come back and it's just right mm -hmm. oh man that's pretty cool uh what do we got do 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 mm -hmm. uh oh one Yay. more thing one more thing yes yes, yes. <laughs> the raspberry pi zero is being used to power ventilators just oh. as the demand it's the horse. The yes. <laughs> Not to power the horse, but to power, well, the horse that drives the ventilator. <laughs> but but there, this is awesome. It's being used to power ventilators just as the demand for the Raspberry Pi surges due to our stay-at-home lockdown orders and people using it for maker projects. But the Raspberry Pi Zero is actually the perfect form factor because of the size, cost and computing power needed for ventilators they don't they don't need powerful computers to run and even upton um in this article was talking about that and how also um how quickly they can actually manufacture the pi zero compared with other soc and computer options um they can you know the tooling is really quick and manufacturing is quick so and this is something that needs you know, we need help right now. And um, medical companies are are asking for Raspberry Pi Zero. So they've upped, de you know, up their production. And this is yeah. just really <laughs> wonderful. And thank you to Artharin in chat for this story. I would have missed it. It's great. That's pretty <laughs> cool. Hey, if you got some ideas and thoughts about what you could do with a Raspberry Pi, um, or what about, uh, man, I still want to get that x86 uh, Pi size ish yeah board from so last cool. week all right yes. i might pick that up and you know what if i do i want to send you an email pedro how would i do that well mm -hmm. uh you can do that a multitude of ways if you happen to know my email which is totally not pedro at linuxgamecast.com no siree hey if you happen uh, to know, wait, if you happen to know my email <laughs> which is at linuxgamecast i will never see it because that's a whitelisted um thing it goes into the nope zone just adds up mm-hmm <laughs> uh, basically, anything that goes there, it has to be scrutinized first, then it shows up. Unless you go through our uh, contact form of Doom, which is uh, on LinuxGameCast.com. You just hit the contact button, so cleverly disguised that it is, and make sure LWDW is the show that you pick and fill out the rest of the form. Mm -hmm. That's uh, There's some warnings at the top, you know... Mind the lakes. The, the uh, spam golem doesn't... Uh, well, it just noms all the... <laughs> 
flakes. <laughs> it will take you from orbit, man. But hey, man, it's like you can send it to show at LetXCMcast.com and that, that will get sorted through eventually. I just assume anything that shows up there is like marketing stuff, which it normally does. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. But um, David, you can leave YouTube comments, uh, Twitter and stuff like that. I just, I just can't give you a guarantee because there's a lot of bandwidth to like sort through all that. Normally, you know, if you hit me on the, um, or any of us on social media, we'll just get back to you right then. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Yay. So this comes to us from Ertain. I agree with using Synaptic over whatever comes by default on Ubuntu. Synaptic makes it easy to install, reinstall, and remove packages. Ah, so true. Yes, yes, Ertain. Synaptic is one of the first apps I install with a fresh install of any distro. And it's definitely the Swiss Army knife of package managers. And it's been around for years. <laughs> it's like awesome. up to this point. Uh, <laughs> can you please... <laughs> Distro developers, uh, GUI including. maintainers, whatever you want to call <laughs> yourselves, stop trying to reinvent the package manager. You look yeah. at Synaptic. <laughs> yes. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it needs more pictures. And it could be, it, it, it's a little too. It really doesn't. Oh, Pedro. no, it doesn't. Pedro, hear me out. It, it's a little too fast. <laughs> a little too fast. Uh, it's yeah. too fast. It's too streamlined. All the options are clearly labeled. It's yeah. uh, way too intuitive. Mm. You can't have that. You gotta have big uh, fu buttons because fu. That's why. And all of the screenshots. And let's embed some video so that, that page about that application that's about three kilobytes of a download mm -hmm. takes about three seconds to load the page because it's loading that stupid video. Now, mm -hmm. I, I would say, you know, to Matthew's point, is like, please don't say, you know, do you know what's worse than that, Matthew? Is six <laughs> other different applications that are different from each other on different distributions. <laughs> that's what's worse. Hey, look, we all have our own store that works differently from the other ones. Yeah, that's going to help mm -hmm. new users a whole lot. Yeah, uh, when yeah. I was a new user to Linux, uh, I tried... Um, a bunch of different ones it's like oh synaptic this is nice mm -hmm. and then ubuntu introduced the software center it's like oh <laughs> synaptic this is still nice yes okay and it's 2020 now current year argument i'm running kde neon and it's like oh look synaptic this is nice huh. <laughs> not broke don't fix <laughs> yeah yep <laughs> yes. Max, this is from CompuCat. They write, hey, thanks a ton for verifying that the Fire Studio 2626 works near flawlessly. Just picked one up one myself. Loads better than the current solution, which may or may not involve passing audio over network pulse audio to a Windows VM. Huh. Mm -hmm. That that sounds horribly dangerous, but good on you, man. <laughs> That's a roundabout way of doing That's it. Awesome. Please send pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things um, I can think about that is, you know, that's the reason why I started doing the interfacing Linux series. If you're unfamiliar with that, it's just a little side project I'm just doing, a little out of pocket. I'm like, hey, no one else is going to do this. Fine, I'm going to do it. Uh, it needs to get done, like a lot of stuff I do. But it is there to, I wonder if this interface, this audio interface, I would like to produce music mm -hmm. or I'd like to make a show under Linux. It's not clearly documented on the internet anywhere that, hey, that Fire Studio 20, you could go to like Fado.org and somebody's like, I don't know, kind of, maybe. I, and then other people's like, it doesn't work at all. I bought one and plugged it in and like, yo, look, it works, done. <laughs> or like the DigiDesign 003, it was like, hey, it, it plugs in, it works. And I had to show up and be like, but you can't use it. You might want to put that somewhere in the documentation that it's not usable. <laughs> I'm just trying to do this, man. Like the Digi Design, the Smurf box, a bunch of shrug emojis around that. Okay, fine. Let's buy one, plug it in. Hey, look, it works. You can buy one. And uh, so that's it. Thanks. I'm glad I was able to help. That's quite doing what I can. What I got, man. I'm going to keep on doing Aww. it. Uh, Thank you, CompuCat. <laughs> yeah. Right on, right on. Okay. We got to bounce out of here. Uh, we will see you next week. But let's go ahead and roll some. Credits. Yay! <laughs> do, 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 do. Ben Stone! Pedro Mateus! <laughs>
and myself. It's your name, Jill. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay. (laughs) Thanks again to our advisor, Haplo, and to all our wonderful producers and executive producers. Thank you so much. It's amazing. Ah. Yeah, no, it still uh, baffles the mind looking at every single one of your names. <laughs> uh, I'm humbled at the same time. Why, though? Because <laughs> we're awesome. Aww. <laughs> we're awesome. I've never been accused of being awesome before. We're so awesome <laughs> that we plug exotic audio hardware into box. Like, what do you yes. mean, driver? <laughs> It's USB, I expected it to work. (laughs) Bye, you guys.